going to solve and graph the solution for what would be considered here a compound inequality, right? Because we got a couple of uh, inequality symbols floating around here. So there's a few ways you can go about this. One way is you could dissect this by taking part of the problem, like the first couple of expressions that we're comparing with this less than symbol, dragging that off to the side. Set up one problem there to solve. And then take the second two expressions here that are compared to this other inequality symbol, drag that off to the side. Set up another problem there to solve. You can also leave it all pieced together. That's fine. But if I dissect it like this, and basically what I'm doing is I'm setting up an eventual intersection of answers. I want to stick a little and in between there to make sure I remember that, hey, this is all joined together in the first place. So solving the left-hand inequality, so to speak, we're going to start by simplifying by distributing this 2 through and getting 2x plus 18 minus 3. Carry that a step further. Join your like terms of 18 and minus 3 to get 15. Subtract 15 over. If I subtract 15 over, I'll get negative 22 less than 2x, at which point you want to divide by 2. So it's negative 11 less than x. There's one solution, at least one part of it. Now we're going to have that part and the part we're going to get over here. So on the blue side, we follow the same kind of operations, right? In fact, when we simplify this, we're just going to end up right here again, which is why it is possible you could just leave this all together in the first place and solve completely up to you. But if I know that's where I'm going and I'm going to get 2x plus 15, if I set that less than 20, I'm going to subtract 15 over. So 20 minus 15, get 5. Divide through by 2. If I divide through by 2, x is going to be less than 5 halves. So bringing this back together, those two answers, I've got going from left to right, negative 11 is less than x is less than 5 halves. So I'm showing here that x is falling between those two values. So if part of this is graphing your solution, I set up a number line. On that number line, I give myself 0 for some perspective. Over here, I plop down the negative 11. Over here, to be a little more detailed about it, it's 5 halves, right? So that's 2 and 1 half. So here's 2 and 3. 5 halves would fall in between. Graphing this out, understanding that the x falls between these two, and we are not including these two, right? Because there's no less than or equal to symbols here. We've got open circles. We shade in between. So there's the graph part that they requested as far as the interval notation is concerned. With the interval notation, we're taking the leftmost boundary, basically, and the rightmost boundary. We're setting that up. And then we're using parentheses around those two values to show that we are not actually including them in our solution. So the interval notation basically helps us to illustrate what's going on up here and vice versa. Number line will give us that interval notation.